glass on the floor And he answered me And delivered me From every fear And those who look upon him Are radiant They'll never be Happy, happy, happy New Year. <laughs> wow. Well, it's kind of like a birthday. It's another trip around the sun. Woohoo, we made it. Yeah. You guys ready to bring it before the Lord this morning? Yeah? All right.
Is it my turn? It is your turn. All right. <laughs> I'll, now, although George is really getting the hang of it, I stared at him for a second, and as soon as he heard the drum roll, he goes like this. So he, he knows the cue. That's awesome. Thanks for the drum roll, brother. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year! <laughs> it's only happy when the Lord is in it. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Communion Sunday today. So for those of you online and those of you here, get yourselves ready. Get your hearts ready. Get your communion elements ready. All of that good stuff. It's an awesome time in the Lord. I wanted to remind you guys again. You're already, if you haven't started reading the Bible from cover to cover for 22, you're already a day behind. <laughs> so pick one of these up out in the lobby. Um, we have an app that's available. Thank you, Manny. Good job. Dana, wherever you are. Uh, you can also pick it up right, just, you can access it right on our website. So no excuses, all right? Read the Bible every day. You will be blessed. I guarantee it. God guarantees it. All right. Um, we are relocating. I had to read my notes to remember we're relocating. It's like I'm deluged with it. But we are, we are relocating, like, basically right next door next week. But already there's been a ton of work going on over there. Ann and I were talking about it yesterday, and she made the great suggestion that after this service this morning, all of us, every single one of you, will go over to the new building, and we're going to pray over that building and pray over the move. Amen? Amen. Can I see commitments? Yeah. All right, all right. Awesome. I can't wait. Can't wait. Pray, and you can pray vocally, pray in your, in your heart and your head, however you want to do it, but pray, okay? We have to bathe what we're doing in prayer. It's going to be a big day. I'm so looking forward to it. Um, and I think that's all I've got. God bless you. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Honestly, is there a better place to start off this new year than with our brothers and sisters in the house of God at the feet of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Says, uh, let it be so. Hallelujah. Says, I rejoice that it is so. Hallelujah that we are together celebrating the beginning of this year. Would you uh, rise with me as we read the scriptures for this morning? And as we read these scriptures that are familiar to us, let's try to embrace the authority of the one who is speaking them, especially what he announces as blessed, and what he uses the word shall for, because the word shall is a guarantee by our divine creator. We're going to read in Matthew chapter 5, the first 12 verses. Seeing the crowds, he, Jesus, went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. We rejoice in that every week. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in case we miss the weight of that, he elaborates. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. Why? For your reward is, is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen? Amen. Please join me as we go to the Father. 
Heavenly Father, we love you. And we are so grateful for who you are and all that you're doing in our lives individually and collectively in this fellowship. No doubt we could pull every person in here and they're happy that 2021 is in their rearview mirror. Amen. But Father, let's not, uh, let help us to not lose track of what you have done for us through this year. All the sustaining, all the, the way you have come beside us and encouraged us and strengthened us and challenged us and inspired us. And now here you're moving us at the same time to this new location. We pray for your anointing over this transition. And Father, as we open up 2022, we know it is the heart cry of this fellowship to pivot out to the community. So Father, we ask that you go before us. We ask that you anoint the hearts of those by your spirit of whom we will come in contact with. Anoint those who will pray for this effort. Anoint those who will labor in this effort. Lord, as this one song says, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Help us to feel what you want us to feel. Help us to see what you want us to see. So we'd be effective vessels for you in reaching the world with your gospel. Lord, that you may be lifted up in all that we do. And Lord, that many will come to know you personally. Father, we lift up the rest of this service, every song spoke, every word spoken and every word sung, that it be for your glory and your honor alone. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you're online, don't forget to get your uh, communion elements ready because we're going to do that right after this song.
Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. I don't need it. Good. Good morning. How is everyone? Good. Praise God. It's just good to be here and it's good to see so many wonderful people sharing the love of the Lord beginning of the year. I think it's only appropriate that we celebrated his birth at the end of the year. And here it is today we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ to begin this year. So please rise and join me as we go before the throne of God. I'm going to open with prayer, and I'd like for us as I pray to go before the throne of God individually, and if there's anything that's clouding your mind today, your heart, anything that's disturbing you, ask our God to just forgive you, to cleanse you, so that we can go before his throne with communion and in his peace. Lord, we thank you that you have given us an opportunity once again, Lord, to simply say yes to you, to honor you with the living God as you have given us salvation in Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for this moment, Lord, this moment in eternity where we will share in communion. Share in communion, Lord, with a cleansed heart because of the forgiveness in which you've given us. So we thank you. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, today we shall honor our Lord Jesus Christ through communion. He asked us to do this. Actually, it was a commandment to do it on the night he was betrayed. Our Lord, his forgiveness, his mercy is unimaginable, and yet we live in it knowing that we're cleansed and washed in the blood of Jesus. So I want to share what Paul said to the Corinthians years and ages ago. Think about the agony, the scorn, the scourging, the suffering that our Lord went through for each and every one of us. And yet, his precious blood that they meant for wrong cleanses us even today. Paul told the Corinthians as he speaks to us today, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. Many of us have been betrayed, but nothing like our Lord. Our Lord, the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you will join me in taking the bread. Father, as we take this bread, symbolizing your body, we know, my God, that you alone are worthy, that you alone have given us everything. And this time makes us remember, Lord, of your death, your resurrection, and look forward to the return of you, my Lord Jesus. So we thank you. He also said, when he had, for the cup, he says, in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup in in the New Testament in my blood. 
do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we take the cup? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Bow your hearts with me. Lord, we look forward to your return. We look forward, Lord, to being with you eternally. It has been done, but Lord, you have said it is finished. And we thank you. As we walk today and throughout this year, we ask in Jesus' name that you would let us forever remember the price you paid for us, that we no longer are by ourselves. We belong to you. And so, Father, we ask in the glorious name of Jesus that today we will remember you. Remember the resurrection and know that you are alive forevermore and that you have ministered to each of us and cleansed us with the blood, your precious blood. And Lord, let us remember this day as a day that you have given us eternally in Christ. And we thank you and we pray in the precious name of Jesus and all of his children said, amen, amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
song at the beginning of every morning in 22, right? Oh 
every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for next part your prayer for 2022 Thank you so much, Lord. Let that be our prayer for 2022, God, that we will build our lives on you, the firm foundation of your grace and your mercy and your love, God. We just thank you for, the, for your presence here, for this gathering. God, we call it out to you. Call it out to you. We are nothing without you, and we are everything with you, Lord. We thank you for this morning, and just pray, God, that uh, <laughs> you have smiled upon your people this morning, God, as we call out to you in thanksgiving in wonder, 
and love. Thank you, Father. And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right, so you can get up and greet each other. Socially distanced, of course. And uh, God bless you. <laughs> I love to see everybody greeting everybody, but I have a suggestion. Did you wish the person next to you Happy New Year in the name of Jesus Christ? Come on, let's do it right now. Happy New Year in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Come on. Don't be shy. He's watching. I know that. No, of last month. Happy birthday. 93? 94. <laughs> Welcome to 2022, dear. <laughs> wow. Whew. Father, we thank you for Jean who is so obedient and so encouraging to each and every one of us here. Lord, I just uh, thank you for this body of believers that you have gathered together this morning, both here in this building and online, Lord. Lord, that you are our Savior and we know, Lord, who you are and grateful for who you are and what you've done in our lives. You've got us to 2022, Lord, for a reason. Lord, it's your will, Lord, that we're here. Every breath that we take is because of you. And I pray that every breath that we take is for you, Lord. So, Lord, be with us today as we open your word now. Speak through me, I pray, by your Holy Spirit, by your word, Lord. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's children said, amen. amen. So, again, welcome to 2022. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. What a wonderful time of worship we had. I will build my life upon Jesus, the rock, the author and the finisher of our faith, the lamp unto our feet. So much more, such a wonderful time just to sing praises to the Lord. You know, it's amazing. I don't know, some of you are new to the church, and you may or may not realize that this is the beginning of our third year, so we've, we've been a, a body of believers for two years. <laughs> and uh, it's a testament to the power of God, because, I mean... Anytime you start a church, it's a testament to the power of God because Jesus builds his church. But we just happened to start it just before the pandemic hit. <laughs> and, and we have not only survived, but we have thrived. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's all about the grace of God, brothers and sisters. It's all about the grace of God. We're so thankful. I, I pray that your hearts are open to him, full of thankfulness, not only what he's done so far over these last couple of years, but what he's going to do, that you have a faith and a, 
and an expectation that God is going before us and all these things. That's why we're here. We're not here for what we want to do. We're here for what God wants us to do. So I welcome all of you for that. Jesus promised that he would build his church, and we're seeing him. We're seeing him do that right before our very eyes. He's constantly amazing me. He's constantly blowing my mind every day. And you may think this is a, an exaggeration, but it's, it's absolutely true. Every day I see miraculous work being done by our Lord in this church. Every day. And, and I just want to tell you something because it's applicable to your life. It's not just the big stuff. <laughs> it's every detail. Every detail in your life, every detail in this church, we give to the Lord. Do that in your life, brothers and sisters. You will be, if you start expecting that and opening your heart and mind and opening the eyes of your heart to that understanding, your life will change so dramatically, so profoundly. Every day I see miraculous work. I, I see people giving their life to Jesus who were kind of wavering or maybe didn't even know. I see people rededicating their lives to Jesus. These are miracles. The fact that you're sitting here is a miracle. The fact that you're watching online, it's a miracle. We have joy in our hearts. People serving here with joy in their hearts. Ever since we began working for the Lord in this church, I feel and have felt from the very beginning like I'm being carried along by the Holy Spirit. And my life is just being carried along. And, you know, <laughs> he doesn't care how bad I am as a person being carried along. He carries me along, guiding and directing holding me together, strengthening me, comforting me, teaching me about Jesus. I've learned more about Jesus in the last two years than I probably had in the last 20 years. I see a lot of people shaking their heads, agreeing with me. We're all in this together. It's amazing. I just feel like I've been swept along. And as I was thinking about this week, working on what you're going to hear today, it's my third attempt at putting something together for you this morning. <laughs> and finally, the Lord spoke to me. He says, yeah, you, you, I mean, he spoke to me in, you know, in my heart that, yes, you are being carried along. And it brought me to Isaiah chapter 35, where he shows us a highway. It's a beautiful, poetic vision from Isaiah of how to live God's way in this world and how God himself goes before us in miraculous ways. I think it's just a great way, this chapter is a great way to think about this new year that's in front of us. Isaiah, he, he helps us understand things in the world in which we live, and he does it anticipating 2022, okay? I know, that, I know it's been around a while, but, and he anticipated 21 and 20 and all the years before that. But this year, too. And you know how? We live in this postmodern world, people call it, this iPad world, this telephone world. We don't even call it a telephone anymore. It's just a phone or a smartphone or a dumb phone or whatever it is. And, and we live in this world of images, it's an image. I mean, it's just amazing to watch people just have, looking for another image and clicking and clicking and clicking. Or it's, <clears throat> it's um, an Instagram world or a TikTok world or many other kinds of worlds out there. And this, this visual, these visual platforms that we've become so accustomed to, even reliant upon, this visual way, these images. And Isaiah gives us 
images in his words. So if you read the, Old, the New Testament and you, you read the letters, let's say, from Paul or, or James or Peter or Jude even, when we did Jude, those are doctrinal letters. And they're written primarily in prose, okay? But Isaiah is a poet. And he's going to give us images, poetic vision of how God works. So that's what we're going to see. So let's begin. You ready? I'm going to read Isaiah 35, all 10 verses. <clears throat> so remember now, he's seeing. This is a vision. And he says, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And here it is. And a highway shall be there and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. The lion shall be there, nor shall any, no lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and singing shall flee away. Amen. What a picture. What a picture of our God. These five scenes, they're, they're scenes of transformation that God enacts. It's like putting a screen in front of us, and in rapid succession, each scene shows us how the world is without him, without God, and then with him, without God and with him. So scene one, we remember we see a desert. It says, verse one, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. So the very first words from Isaiah are the wilderness. And then the dry land, a picture of a godless world, an unblessed people. So we're in a desert, and Israel knew all about deserts for 40 years. Their ancestors wandered in the desert, the Negev. It's a triangular desert near the, uh, the Dead Sea. And then we see this miraculous transformation in verse 2. It says, Speaking of the desert and this wilderness, it shall blossom abundantly, he says, and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. So the desert, he's saying, this parched land is going to come alive. It's going to come alive with joy and with singing as though the land itself was a person. It's person, he personifies the land so that we understand it. He sees it with singing with joy because of the Lord. He says the wilderness bursts into bloom. Aren't you glad you're a Christian? 
This is, this is what it's like to be a Christian. You could burst with joy and singing. And then he says the desert is suddenly fertile like Lebanon. Lebanon, famous for its forests. You think of the cedars of Lebanon. It's God's hand miraculously transforming a wilderness, a dry land like me at one time. And I suspect like you. And he turns it into this lush and majestic and verdant place, like he says, like Carmel, which is along the Mediterranean Sea and the whole region of Sharon, the same place in that same area on the west coast of the Mediterranean. And the land is no longer a wilderness. That's our point for us. And it's even going beyond the beauty of Lebanon itself. He says, to the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is being displayed in the transformation of nature. And the glory of the Lord is displayed in each and every one of us. Praise God. Then the seed scene fades out and we move to scene two and we come to some trouble. We see a crowd that's in a state of something like a state of panic or alarm or there's apprehension amongst these people, it says. And we're not told who they are. Maybe they're soldiers about ready to defend a city. It's kind of how I think of it. And they're ready to fight the enemy, but the enemy's too powerful. Too powerful. And there's this severe fear. There's this uneasiness. There's this apprehension of what they're about to face. And it says... The hands of these people, the hands of these soldiers are hanging limply to their side. and Their knees are knocking. Actually, they're collapsing under them. They're in such fear that their hearts, it says, are failing them. But God, once again, a transformation takes place. Verses 3 and 4, strengthen the weak hands. Oh, yeah, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. You don't need a knee knee replacement. You need the Lord. (laughs) I love that. I'm putting that on my refrigerator. Make firm the feeble knees, Lord. Come on. (laughs) Say to those who have an anxious heart, oh, come on, this this is better than healing my knees. He says, be strong. Not in your own strength. In my strength, God is saying. Be strong. Fear not. Oh, man, that's, that's, our, that's our cry for 2022. Be strong. Fear not. Behold, he says, your God will come with vengeance, with recompense of God. He will come and save you. He, he, God comes. He comes to these frightened people, these warriors, whoever they are, and they recover their strength. They, they recover their morale. God offers strength for their feeble hands. He steadies their weak knees. He soothes and comforts their failing hearts. Why? Because it says in verse 4, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. The Lord will be with you wherever you go. You believe that? I hope you do. The Lord will be with you wherever you go, wherever you are. You have this picture of God. I just imagine God seeing these people that are just flailing and weak and fearful and all of that, and I just see God rushing in to save them. Verse 3, go to another group on our screen. I'm sorry, scene 3, not verse 3. This time we see people who are suffering, suffering from major physical disabilities Some of them are blind, unable to see. Some of them are deaf, unable to hear what's being said. Others are lame. They can't walk. Others can't communicate. It's a picture of the redeemed people of God. This is a spiritual description, okay? 
It's a picture of the redeemed people of God before He transforms them. Okay? Blind to His glory. Physically blind, maybe, but the important thing is He's saying that they're blind to His glory. That they're deaf to His Word. Just turn a deaf ear to His Word. They're failing to walk in His ways to worship Him as He deserves to be worshipped. But even as, he, as we take in that tragedy, that suffering of the blind and the deaf and the mute and the lame, but God, and He comes in and He tra- and, and transforms before our very eyes. It says in verse 5 and the beginning of verse 6, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, And then shall the lame man leap like a deer. I want that one. And the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Because one day God is going to restore the lost faculties of all disabled people. But right now, the important thing is that he's restoring us from the inside out. He's regenerating us. He's giving us eyes to see, ears to hear. He's giving us legs to leap like a deer. I think he is. Scene four flashes on the screen. We're back to the desert, but the focus is not on the blossoming flowers in the desert. It's instead, it's the causes of the blossoming. This miraculous supply of water, it says, to irrigate the desert. Verse the end of verse six. For waters, it says, break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And then verse 7, the burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water in the haunt of jackals where they lie down. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. So the ground that was burning sand, think of yourself, think of your inner being. The ground that was so thirsty inside of you But now, by the grace of God, bubbling springs appear. The hot sand is transformed into rushing pools of cool water. How amazing is that? God did precisely that for his people when they wandered in the wilderness. He did it physically for 40 years. He provided water in the desert for them, did he not? Jesus uses this imagery himself in his own public ministry so beautifully. He promised that all who would come to him, all that would come to Jesus and put their trust in him would not only drink the living water, which is awesome, but that streams of water would become rivers of living water out of us. Why? Because he uses us to irrigate the spiritual desert of this world. John tells us that this is life-giving Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gushing out of us to a dry and thirsty land. And then this final scene, scene five. Once again, we're back in the desert. The emphasis now... is not on the infertility of the desert, the dryness and the drought of the desert, but another danger of the desert, which is that it becomes kind of a a trackless waste, a place where we're confused, a place where we can't really navigate ourselves. It could be a terrifying place. I don't know which way to go in my life. I don't know what's good and what's bad for me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm lost in the desert. A sandstorm has come upon me. It's obliterated all the roads and tracks that I used to rely on. No signs for me anywhere. You ever been there? It's terrifying. Terrifying. But verse 8, God arrives, and a highway will be there. 
It will be called the way of holiness. Isaiah says, God will provide a way for you and for me. A way of holiness. We think of Jesus, don't we? John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus himself is the way for the people of God. We are pilgrim people. You may think you're set in your ways, but you're really a pilgrim. Jesus is our way. And we have this picture of all of us, each and every one of us, walking on God's highway of holiness. Did you know that he prepared that for you? It's right there in the scripture. Highway of holiness. Forget Highway 50. (laughs) We're driving to San Francisco tomorrow. I'm thinking of the highway of holiness all the way. (laughs) And then look what happens, he says in verses 9 and 10. No lion, it says, shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. Verse 10, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Zion is an image, obviously, for the Israelites, but it's also an image of a place where God's people dwell. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness with, and joy and sorrow and singing shall flee away. God's people are protected, protected from ferocious beasts. We're going to enjoy fellowship. We are enjoying on this highway fellowship with one another as the redeemed people of God. There you are, five pictures. God's miraculous, transforming power. He's the regenerator. He's the refresher. You know what he's saying in between all these lines? He's saying to each of us, trust me. Go my way. Go the way of Jesus. When you do, when you are on God's highway of holiness, you, you, you will see the glory of the Lord. Because Jesus is coming soon. He's going to establish a new world. And there's going to be a thousand years of the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. Amen? I mean, we're happy about 2022, but you know what I'm happier about? Forever. I like forever. I'm greedy about forever. I want forever with the Lord and all of you. So don't disappoint me now. I want you all there with me. Thousand years, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Isaiah says in verse 3 again, he will come and save you. Oh, man. That's a promise, and God always, always is true to every single detail of every single promise. He will come and save you. Are you feeling weak this morning? Are you feeling a little anxious this morning? Are you feeling feeble-hearted? Take it to the Lord. He will come and save you right now. He will rescue you. When God's salvation comes, it comes with the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. He heals the blind and the deaf and the mute and the lame. And I love verse 6. The lame don't just walk. They leap like a deer. I mean... God is, never does anything halfway. 
He's, he, you know, if he's going to give you an ability to walk, he's going to give you an ability to leap like a deer. And think about that in terms of your following him. Think about walking with him. That there are times in your life when it's as though you are leaping like a deer with him. You see that picture? He's talking about our glorified bodies as well. That's the beauty of this kind of prophecy is that it talks, it's talking about the exact problems that the Israelites had 700 years before Christ, and it's talking about us right now, and it's talking about us in our glorified bodies. So comprehensive. Don't put God in a box. Miraculous power. If you're saved, you are a miracle. When Jesus walked the earth, he would completely heal. I love these in in the Gospels. I love it when I read that he goes to a village and he completely heals all the people that need healing in the village. Wow. When When he leaves the village... It's like everybody's looking around going, nobody's sick. Nobody has any pain. No suffering. It's a foretaste of heaven. That was only for that time and that place. I think of John the Baptist. He's the greatest prophet ever, according to Jesus. But they put him in prison. And he became discouraged. And by the way, Jesus was his cousin. And he's wondering, is Jesus? I mean, I'm here in prison and I'm suffering. Is Jesus really the Messiah? And so he sends his his disciples to question Jesus. It's pretty brash, you know? It's like, maybe you're just my cousin. (laughs) Maybe you just are a son of a carpenter, end of discussion. Are you really the Messiah? Or should I look for another? Strange question. Strange question for John the Baptist. Of all people, the greatest prophet, According to Jesus, he's the greatest prophet. You know, when everything's going well, it's really easy to say, ah, Jesus is great. (laughs) And that's what was happening with John for a long, long time. He was out there in no man's land, Wearing weird clothes. (laughs) He's definitely not a GQ kind of guy. (laughs) Eating weird food. And multitudes are going out there listening to him preach and being baptized by him. Things are going great. Then he's thrown into prison. And I think he really knows this is the end for him. And he says, Jesus... Are you really the Messiah? And Jesus answers back in Matthew 11. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. That takes my breath away. I don't know about you. We may find ourselves in John's place from time to time. It's not going very well. I'm a Christian. I thought this was going to be all roses. Roses. 
Jesus may not give us legs to leap like a deer right now. But there will be a day. And that is his promise. I believe his promise. He's, Isaiah is telling us that your life and my life is a journey. We're sojourners, we're pilgrims. Every single one of us. Some of us have longer journeys than others so far. This is not our home. Our home is the kingdom of God. We're headed there. We're on the highway of holiness heading to our true home. Right now, your life may not be everything the way you want it to be. God knows that. And while you're here, while you're here, one more time, while you are here, he has made a way for you. Verse 8, and a highway shall be there. It shall be called the way of holiness. And then verse 9 again, no lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Peter talks about it in 1 Peter chapter 5. He says, be sober-minded. Be watchful. That's part of what we do when we're on the highway of holiness. We're sober-minded and we're watchful. Because we can be watchful because he's given us new eyes to see. He says, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So often, we don't know how much God is protecting us. I think he, he protects me all the time. So glad I didn't go over there like I wanted to. So glad I didn't do that like I wanted No, he, he's constantly guiding me. He says, be careful. Don't wander off that highway, guys. Be careful. There's lions out there seeking someone to devour. Stay on his highway. Many people say, you know, I'll share this with you. You know, people say life's a marathon, not a sprint. Is that right, Gene? Okay. <laughs> so glad. There you go. But she's doing something on this marathon. She's finishing the race strong. One of the amazing things about the marathon, 20, I think it's 26.2 miles, something like that. It's 26 point something. If you have nothing to do someday, <laughs> and you, you say, what should I do? I'm not going to suggest that you run a marathon. I'll talk about that in a second. I'll suggest you go to the finish line and watch the people come in. And you know what you see? You see purity in their face. You might see joy. You might see pain. You might see joy and pain, but you will see the real person because there's nothing left. You cannot pretend if you've just run 26.2 miles. It's a real deal. <laughs> I ran one in San Francisco. I want to tell you it was last year, but it was actually 40 years ago. <laughs> but I can still remember the pain. I still have some marks of that experience in me. We started on the middle of the Bay Bridge. Probably two or 3,000 people. And uh, it's just this tremendous rush that I felt. I'd been training for it and training for it and training for it and running and running and running. And I had a goal, you know, how fast I wanted to run. And I, when the race started, I just couldn't contain myself. I was just so amped up. I, was, I literally was yelling, running down the Bay Bridge. I was like, woohoo, you know, I was just going. The problem was I was running too fast. It wasn't a sprint. <laughs> but I thought, in, I didn't even know 
how fast I was going. I was, my plan was to run to this 26 whatever miles under three hours, which meant I had to run a little better than eight minute miles. <laughs> and I was running. And I felt unstoppable. I felt like I was just being carried along by the Holy Spirit, although I didn't know the Holy Spirit in those days. About 10 miles into it, I looked at my watch. <laughs> I was averaging 650s. <laughs> that just pains me to think about it. <laughs> right now, when, when I take my walks, my walks are 21 minutes a mile. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I reached the Golden Gate Bridge at mile 15. My knees gave out. Just like those warriors that we read about in verse 3. I go over the Bay Bridge, and I come back, and as I'm coming back down the slope on the Bay Bridge, my hips started to And I literally had to think about moving my legs. It wasn't just happening. I was hobbling, hobbling and hobbling, hobbling to the finish line. Three hours and 33 minutes. You're wondering how fast I went. <laughs> Maybe that's how you're feeling sometimes. You started out strong, and now you're hobbling for whatever reason. Lord, this is really hard. You may be hobbling. You may be bleeding. Yeah, it's rough terrain. Life is hard. Miles to climb and bridges to cross and long stretches where there's no rest. I just need some rest, Lord. Not yet. But you are in Christ. This is, this is the point, right? You are in Christ, and he has given you his highway of holiness. Verse 10, the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. And everlasting joy shall come upon their heads. Everlasting joy upon their heads. And he knows that maybe you're hobbling. But you're in Christ. And he's going to give you joy. He's going to give you joy, it says, like a crown on your head. It's like... The joy of the Lord is glowing as a crown on your head. That's what I see. A crown of joy. You can have that for 2022. You can have that right now. It's a vision. What a vision God has given us. This is the way, he's saying. This is my way. It's my way of holiness. Yes, it requires us to persevere. Finish the race strong. It requires works of sanctification in us to continue to grow closer and closer to the Lord, to come and gather and hear the Word of God and let it seep into each and every crevice of your inner being. Yes, but it's all available to each and every one of us by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. He reassures us, the Holy Spirit. He reassures us. He reassures us along every trajectory, every circumstance, every set of contingencies that you face. He will help you. He is your helper on this highway. He's, your, he's going to nudge you. If you start to go off, you know, he's going to nudge you back. He's going to prompt you. He's going to guard you. He's going to protect you. 
He's going to enrich you. He's going to comfort you. And most of all, He's going to reveal the Lord Jesus Christ to you in ever and ever more clear and powerful ways. God is saying to us through Isaiah, I have a highway of holiness for you to walk on and to live on. It's available to you right now. Come, my child, he's saying. Come, walk on my highway. It's a vision for our lives right now for this year. And guess what? It's a vision forever. We're pilgrims. We're sojourners. You know what? To, this, this, this really hit me. Last night when I was praying over this, I was, is that we're all traveling together on his highway of holiness. We're all here. We'll help each other. We'll have the Holy Spirit with us, and we'll all travel on his highway of holiness together today and this year and forever, brothers and sisters. Jesus is the highway. He is the lamp, as we sang, unto our feet. He is the light to our path. Paul says in Colossians 2.6, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Walk in Him. Jesus is our way of holiness. Jesus is our highway in the desert. Jesus is our holy highway. He is our glorified Savior who was and is and is to come, and we get to be with Him forever. The most blessed of all is that Jesus is for me, and He's for you. And He's for us in the most ultimate sense the truest, most powerful, enduring sense, He is for me. And you know what? If He is for me, what am I worried about? If He is for me, let those lions roar. If He is for me, who can obstruct God's holy highway? I'm on my journey on his holy highway. Are you? Deuteronomy 31.8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. He's the God of all grace. He is a refresher a refresher of our hearts. I, I pray that you're refreshed this morning by the love of Jesus. He's a strengthener. He's a strengthener deep in our inner being, and he is a restorer of our souls. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray. Lord, we say hallelujah to you. Lord, we are so grateful that you have made a way. We're so grateful for your Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, Jesus is for us. Thank you. He died for us so that we may be saved. He died for us so that we may walk on his holy highway, his highway of holiness. We praise you. We thank you. Be with us, Lord, in this interesting time of 2022. We know, Lord, from your word that you go before us in all things. And we thank you for that. 
and we praise you, and we pray this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. God bless you guys. Ready to sing about the goodness of God? Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, great is thy faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And Lord, we ask that you help us in our faith, Lord, as we walk in that highway of holiness, Lord. Lord, you are holy and you have called us to be holy. So help us, Lord, to walk in in your ways, Lord. Just the, 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 the word holy means that we are set apart unto you. We are to walk differently from this world. So, Father, we pray that each and every day 
that we walk on this holiness, Lord, that highway of holiness, that people will see Jesus in us and through us, that your Holy Spirit will just work in and through us. We ask, Lord, as your people, as your children, that you are anoint our ways, Lord. Every step that we take, Lord, we are so dependent upon your spirit because we cannot be holy on our own strength. We need you, God. And Lord, may we be encouraged, Lord, for this year, and as George said, for the rest of our lives, this side of heaven, Lord, to walk in such a way that is different from the world and that what pleases you. Father, help us to run this race of faith with endurance and with strength, laying aside our sins, laying aside any distractions, laying aside anything that will slow us down as we put our eyes and focus upon you, the author and finisher of our, of our faith. Great is thy faithfulness. To God be the glory. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome start to 2022, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, don't forget, we're going to go next door, right? Yeah. We're going to go next door in about two minutes and pray over the new building. We'll see you next door in a couple minutes. Happy birthday, Gene.